This is my initial review of the new Google Pixel 6 Pro. I know I'm late, long story, but hopefully it'll be worth it. I've had a couple of Android phones in the last six, seven years, and more recently actually changed from my 12 Pro Max to the S21 Ultra here. But when Google announced the Pixel 6 Pro and the Pixel 6, I was really intrigued by it. I've always wanted to try a Google Pixel and see for myself what the first is all about. This is not a sponsored review, by the way. Well, it is sponsored by the people who support the channel. Your support is what enables me to go and buy these devices to try out. So in a way, this video is brought to you by you and me. I always enjoy trying different products anyway. As much as I love having the convenience of the Apple ecosystem, there are certain things that I think this phone is actually better at. We will cover a few of these things in the video, but I wanted to talk about this one feature that I think can be a game changer for a lot of people. Like you've seen in the intro, this is just one of the things that not only does it do better than Apple and Samsung, it completely blew me away. Is it perfect? No, but I have a strange accent and whenever I try to use this feature uh, on the iPhone, I just end up getting frustrated and typing instead. One of my viewers, I won't mention his name, but actually has a condition which makes it really hard for him to type. So he really relies on speech to text. And we're talking about how much this feature sucks on the iPhone all the time. Uh, it makes some horrible mistakes all the time and it doesn't even try to fix them once the sentence has finished. With the Pixel, I don't know what they've done it, but you know, where he thinks he heard a word and he, he kind of he knows that it is kind of mispronounced, after you finish the sentence, he contextualizes it and fixes it. It's absolutely incredible. My man RJ from RJ Tech has reviewed the Pixel 6 Pro, has done a few videos on it already, go check it out later. He's said that this, this feature is one of his favorite features as well. So I just had to check it out for myself. Why am I so excited about this feature? Well, for me, it's all about time saving. I run another business as well during the day. This channel gets quite busy too. So anything that saves time for me is, is a bonus. It can be when I'm driving and trying to send messages or when I'm out and about taking the dog for a walk and an idea pops up. I love all of that. Just talking to the phone, interacting with the phone like a true assistant is something that has been lacking from, from other phones. Hey. Open notes. I can't find any TVs to open apps nearby. <laughs> I'll rest my case. Hey Bixby, oh, never mind. I'm not even gonna try that. Okay, so it's got a brilliant speech to text functionality. Is that it? No. Let's talk about the design. I've only had this for a few days now, but I was immediately in love of how ergonomic and you know comfortable it is. The, the weight is, is, is great and it looks fantastic. I love my iPhone 13 Pro Max as well. And I have used the large display iPhone since, I don't know, iPhone 7 or whatever. But I gotta say, and Apple fans out there, I'm sorry, I gotta give it to Google here. It is so nice to have this screen, you know, kind of this, the real state, but as well as being comfortable to hold especially for longer periods, you know, in the evening when you sat and just reading and browsing socials. The haptics are awesome. It's only a small thing, I know, but all of those little touches add up to a really great experience. What about the performance of this new Tensor chip from, from Google? When it comes to that, it's not a Snapdragon, right, right? But it is meant to be optimized by Google for machine learning and AI. Love those buzzwords, right? I only just barely experienced some of the, you know, kind of the speech to text recognition that's that's obviously helped by AI and the photo editing, which we'll talk about in a minute. But all I can say is, you know, it feels really snappy. Sorry about that. It does feel really fast. It does, I haven't seen any performance issues here. What about the camera? Do you know, that is the one thing that forever I've been wanting to try. You know, since I've you know, I've known Google Pixel, all I hear about Pixel users is how great this camera is. Uh, one of the content creators that I love watching is Mike from Team VRI. He's always sharing some incredible shots with the Pixel. And I always thought, I gotta give this phone a go. In good lighting so far, this has been incredible. I'm not gonna, you know, get all, oh my God, this is the best camera I've ever used. 
that would be irresponsible. But having used the S21 Ultra and the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the 13 Pro Max, the Pixel does hold its own. It's early days for me still, but it has not disappointed at all. There were a couple of situations, especially when indoors with no natural lighting, um, those shots are nothing special, they're okay. But if you look at this shot here, which is quite tricky for any camera without an ND filter, let alone a smartphone, you know, I'm shooting this, you know, directly at the sunlight coming from the window. I'm asking for trouble in terms of exposure, but it did a fantastic job. You know, I'm taking this shot quite close to the keyboard here and you can see how, you know, it's just a point and shoot situation. It did an awesome job of blurring the background in what I thought was a very natural way, as you can see here. I heard from other YouTubers that, you know, photo feels over-processed. Come on guys, you know, let's be honest and give credit where it's due. I love the iPhone and it takes amazing shots, but look at this you know when you, when you see the iphone shot of the same thing it looks awful actually you know and i tried a couple of different lenses as well with the iphone just to make sure i wasn't like in a macro lens issue like i said credit where it's due in this scenario the pixel just did a much better job a lot more on this to come if you know the channel you know that i will be putting this thing through its paces so if you like this sort of stuff make sure to subscribe and i'm here every week with something something new something like this <laughs>
Samsung devices like the S6 Edge, I remember that, you know, there's a really good phone for fingerprint. In fact, I think I'd rather they kept the, you know, the, the one at the back where they had, I don't know if it was Pixel 5 or whatever it was that you could just touch at the back. Color shift, I am aware that some people have complained about, you know, color shift when using the phone at an angle or something, but I haven't noticed any color issues on the screen. I mean, who is out there using the phone at an angle? <laughs> just hold it straight. Anyway. It's hard not to draw any comparisons with the iPhone or the S21 Ultra because, and soon to be S22 Ultra, but that's probably because it's a similar price range and because we're used to considering these devices flagship devices. My very first impression of using this phone was one of pleasure and lightness and simplicity. And that's pretty cool to me. See you and your smiling faces, hopefully, on the next one. Hey Google, turn off the light. Building up this wall